Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of So I Married a Mennonite. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Kristen and I'm an Italian from Jersey who married a Mennonite. Everybody was asking us, how did you guys meet in the first place? Because this is not like a common scenario. Well, in this episode, I'm gonna share it with you. Buckle your seatbelts and let's join the ride. I came out from Edison, New Jersey to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, because I got a professional acting job working at a place called Sight and Sound Theaters. It is the largest Christian theater company in the United States, and I was lucky enough to land a role right out of high school. So I had been there for a couple of years, was really, really enjoying it, and we had started a brand new show called Splendor of Easter. It was a turn of the century type of a show at the beginning, and I was a dancer on the stage in this peachish, pinkish dress, which I loved. Terrible wig, great dress. I would sashay across the stage, and my husband, that I didn't know at the time, was in the animal husbandry department. So he was brushing the animals and making sure they were ready to go on stage. And he was in one scene where he actually was inside of a feed cart. He was on the stage, even though he wasn't really an actor. And we would pass each other on the stage and he would doff his hat to me and I would wave to him and we would go along our merry way. So never thought much about it, kind of forgot about him to be honest. Fast forward, we started going to a youth group thingy at a local church. It had like Mennonite roots, but it didn't have a Mennonite name. So I'm not even sure I knew that it was even Mennonite based. But anyway, I loved this church and I started leading the drama team inside this church. And here was this same sort of handsome, blonde hair, blue eyed, shy Mennonite guy. And he was helping with the worship team. So you had these two kind of artsy people around the same age. We were in leadership meetings together. So one time we were both early for a leadership meeting and we were in the lobby of this church, right? And he barely had said much to me up to this point. And one day he said this, this one day that we were in the lobby kind of waiting for people to show up. He said, I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind if I shared with you this song that I've been writing. I'd love to get your opinion. And I was like, okay. He was very awkward up to that point, as far as like kind of like stilted and a little nervous about talking with me and with other people. He took out his guitar and he started doing his thing and he closed his eyes and he just started singing this, this beautiful worship song that he had written about God. It was almost like he forgot I was there. And it was like, oh, there's some depth there. I wanna know about him. And so that was kind of like my initial curiosity into this guy, Scott Herzog. So a few months later after that, I had invited this youth leadership team to come see one of the shows I was at at Sight and Sound. I had invited him and he went with this group. And afterwards, I had invited all of them to go to Denny's. Very, very sophisticated restaurant, by the way. We went to Denny's and I got to know him a little bit more there. And I was really curious about him. Like, you know, what's his story? Like, he's so unusual and he's not like other guys that I had known or had dated or was interested in. So I just kind of winged it. And after it was over, after the Denny's experience was over, I just said to him, hey, you know, we should just go out sometime. And to be honest with you, I was very surprised at the response because I thought that this guy would be like, I would love to go out with you. You know, you're, you're you know, kind of popular and you're an actor and, uh, you know, yes, let's do it. Instead, the response I got when I said, we should go out sometime. The response was, oh, okay, yeah, I'll call you sometime. That was it. And I was like, what in the world? This guy, I thought, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, call me. So yeah, it's a little prideful on my part, guys, but 
you know, it was like 26 years ago. So, you know, you know, give me a break. This episode of So I Married a Mennonite is sponsored in part by discoverlancaster.com. Discover Lancaster has its own building right here in the county where you as a visitor can come and check out all the different things that Lancaster County has to offer. You can even see episodes of So I Married a Mennonite right here in the theater. Check out discoverlancaster.com for more information. The next day, he called me up on the phone and I was like, oh, like, and like he'd finally found his voice and we were talking and he's like, do you wanna to go to this restaurant with me called the Italian Oven? And I'm like, Italian Oven? It was like Olive Garden back in the 90s. They had like paper tablecloths and crayons for you to write on. And like there were pasta in the, for the straw, instead of having a regular straw, you had to use like a pot and then the pasta got all mushy by the end of the drink. I don't recommend. Four days later, we go on this date. We're at the Italian oven in Lancaster. And it was like the best date I ever had. It was like almost three hours. I'm shocked. I think we closed the restaurant. Really like they could have gotten rid of us long before that, but they didn't. And thank goodness they didn't because I really felt like we got to know each other. By that time, he had lived in Mexico and Guatemala on mission trips with these Mennonite youth groups and stuff. And I was like, yeah, he's got a little bit of a like universal thing going on. He's got a global understanding. It was just so interesting. He was going to college to teach English and he, it had a lot of like dreams and hopes and we were both creative and it was just so great. It was such a great date. And I knew like he shared with me his background. I shared with him my background and I, I didn't really realize like what that could look like in a lifetime, but I really, really was fascinated by it. I still remember getting into his like 1989 Fiero two door. Uh, he opened the door for me, it started raining and I really did feel like I had like something in my spirit, in my heart. I felt like God said to me, you're gonna marry this man. And I felt so strongly that, that I went home and I wrote this whole thing in my journal about it. This is after the first date with this guy that like was totally from a different background than me. It was just that clicking, you know? Like, you know how sometimes you just like click with certain people. And that's what happened with Scott and I. Four months later, we were engaged and within a year, we were married. You know, talk about a whirlwind courtship. Yeah, I mean, there was just so many things that happened that year and like our families learning about each other and meeting each other and figuring out what is an appropriate wedding with both cultures involved. That's gonna be another episode, guys. Yeah, it was just such a unique experience. And, you know, I think that for me, I feel like love can do that to you. You don't always know where love is gonna take you. It's so incredible how one experience, one moment in time can evolve into this totally other thing. What would have happened if he had never worked at Sight and Sound and drove the feed cart across the stage? What if, if, if we had not been early that particular day for that particular leadership meeting and he hadn't sang that song and we hadn't had that conversation? And what if he had said, I'm busy I don't, or I'm tired, I don't wanna go to Denny's after the show and went home? And you just look at all these really seemingly minute things that happened you look at how those little tiny things, they led up to a path. They led up to my life path and my lifetime soulmate. You know, what we've created together, the family we created, the home we created, the businesses we've created. It's a good reminder now that you still never know. That is a little bit about my story of how I met Scott Herzog. Tune in for another episode when we're talking about how did the wedding day go down? How did the planning go down? Because that's a whole other episode. Wherever you are in the world, whatever your path is, remember, you never ever know. So take each moment and make it count. <music>